We have a really odd article that I wanted to cover from the New York Times. It says crypto industry helps write and pass its own agenda in state capitals. Now we've been talking about, um, you know, the, basically the political effect on cryptocurrency in general on this channel. It's one of the only mining channels that really addresses it. So we're going to continue to address them so that you guys are up to date and kind of have an idea of what going on, what's going on. Now, consider the source here. Consider that it does seem to have a pretty hefty opinionated leaning on it, uh, but we're going to get into it, right? So in the absence of federal regulations, crypto lobbyists and executives are going state by state to get favorable rules enacted. Many lawmakers have been willing partners. The debate took less than four minutes. In the Florida House last month, legislators swiftly gave final approval to a bill that makes it easier to buy and sell cryptocurrency, eliminating a threat from a law intended to curb money laundering. One of the new pauses in the action came when two House members stood up to thank crypto industry stakeholders for teaming up with state officials to write, and dra to write a draft of the bill. Quote, whether you're Binance or Ethereum, Dogecoin or Bitcoin, this is a great bill, end quote, said Representative John Snyder, a Palm City Republican, referring to crypto exchanges and coins. Shortly afterwards, the House voted unanimously to pass the measure. The Senate followed, sending the bill to Governor Ron DeSantis for a signature after 75 seconds of deliberations. Florida's warm embrace of the cryptocurrency agenda is just the tip of an aggressive industry-led push to position states as crypto-friendly beachheads. Across the nation, crypto executives and lobbyists are helping to draft bills to benefit the fast-growing industry, then pushing lawmakers to adopt these made-to-order laws before moving rapidly to prof profit from the legislative victories. The effort is part of an emergency national strategy, or emerging national strategy, sorry, uh, by the crypto industry in the absence so far of comprehensive federal regulatory demands to work state by state to engineer more friendly legal system. Lobbyists are aiming to clear the way for continued explosive growth of cryptocurrency companies, which are trying to revolutionize banking, e-commerce, and even art and music. Many states are racing to satisfy the wish list from crypto companies and their lobbyists better or betting that the industry can generate new jobs. But some consumer advocates worry that this aim to please effort could leave investors and businesses more vulnerable to the scams and risky practices that have plagued crypto's early growth. In Florida, the new money transmission legislation emerged from a months long collaboration between Representative Vance Alupis Jr., a Republican of South Miami, and Samuel Arms who is starting a cryptocurrency investment firm, Tortuga Venture Fund. Quote, Vance has been an incredible asset to the blockchain and crypto community, end quote, Mr. Arms said. Similar teamwork has been on display in Wyoming, North Carolina, Illinois, Mississippi, Kentucky, and other states, according to a New York Times review of state legislative proposals and interviews with legislators and their industry allies. At least 153 pieces of cryptocurrency related legislation were pending this year in 40 states in Puerto Rico, according to an analysis by the National Conference of State Legislators. While it was unclear how many were influenced by the crypto industry, some bills have, have used industry proposed language almost word for word. One bill pending in Illinois lifted entire sentences from a draft provided by a lobbyist. I mean, look, so when we're talking about like lobbying and all this sort of thing, we do have to take into account that that's kind of how literally everything works within the government at this time. So I, it's a kind of a, I understand that the opinion, it's trying to get you to lean against it by like, oh, those terrible lobbyists or whatever. But the fact of the matter is, is that this happens in literally every single industry that the lobbyists come in and they help regulate, right? Because you need somebody that's experienced within the industry. Now, can that be misused? Yes. Has it been misused in the past? For sure, right? We could just look at tobacco companies, for example. 
It doesn't necessarily mean that that is what that this would be a negative though. In New York, at least a dozen industry players have hired lobbyists over the last year, including blockchain.com, a crypto exchange and Paxos, which is trying to set up a national crypto bank, collectively spending more than $140,000 a month, state records show. The state proposals include bills to exempt cryptocurrency from securities law intended to protect investors from fraud. Other legislation, such as in Florida, would exclude certain cryptocurrency transactions from money transmission laws enacted to curb money laundering. Some would take even more radical steps, as in Arizona, where one legislator wants to declare Bitcoin legal tender so it can be accepted to pay off debts. How would just I mean, I don't I don't get it, but how would basically utilizing Bitcoin to pay off debts be a negative. I don't really get it. And I don't see how that is pushing further past or in relation to money laundering at all. Um, at all. But, quote, legislators want to be on the cutting edge on the side of something new, end quote, said Kristen Smith, executive director of the Blockchain Association, a Washington group that represents the industry. Quote, we want to cultivate more champions, end quote. The moves have alarmed current and formal former financial regulators like Lee Rayners, and a, a one-time supervisor at the Federal Reserve Bank of New York, who is now at Duke University Law School. He raised objections last year before North Carolina passed a bill exempting certain experimental cryptocurrency startups from the state's consumer protection laws. Quote, states are being convinced you have to do this if you want to be competitive, so they're rolling out the red carpet for crypto firms, end quote. He said, quote, there's no one pushing back saying there are big risks here to your citizens of money laundering, consumer fraud, and tax evasion. Remember, we've talked about this before. What the what are the attacks going to be? Right, the the that fear that they're going to put into the public so that they can gain control over it. Because at the end of the day, that's what this is about, right? It's about control over it or not control over it. And you're going to have these fear mongering tactics, things like money laundering, protecting the consumer, and so on. Does that mean that there shouldn't be? regulations that are put into place. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that when we start to see those arguments, though, you just need to keep an eye out because it can mean that they're trying to go a lot further with it, right? State legislators, many of whom have limited background in financial regulation, said they have had, they had little choice but to rely on industry experts given the complexity of the crypto market. Well, Yes, and that is, once again, we go back to lobbyists or nothing new under the sun. Typically, they provide some sort of expert opinion to assist within making rules and regulations. That's kind of part of the whole entire structure of our government. Could it be done better? Yes, but that is kind of how this works. About two years ago, Jason Sane, a state representative in North Carolina, spoke with Dan Spooler who wanted to pitch him on crypto projects and later joined the Blockchain Association. Quote, what would it look like, end quote, Mr. Sain said he recalled asking. You tell me. Their collaboration resulted in a bill that Mr. Sain introduced last year creating a regulatory sandbox for financial technology projects, essentially a special license allowing the industry to test new products without following certain regulatory requirements, the bill passed in October, solving the Espinoza problem. In Florida, it began with the 2019 book, Bitcoin Billionaires. State legislators started working with the crypto industry after Mr. Alupis read the book, which details the efforts of Winklevoss bro the Winklevoss brothers, who helped create Facebook to generate new wealth in the crypto industry. Mr. Alupis said he had then spoken with the Gemini Trust Company, the cryptocurrency exchange that the Winklevosses founded, and Anchorage Digital, the first federally charted cryptocurrency bank for input on possible legislation he could introduce. At the time, crypto executives were frustrated with a 2019 Florida court ruling that upheld the conviction of Mitchell Espinoza. 
who had sold Bitcoin to a Miami Beach police officer working undercover as the operator of a Russian stolen credit card enterprise. Mr. Espinoza was charged with laundering money and failing to hold a Florida money transmission license. To me, that still sounds like to this day entrapment. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. The ruling meant that any two-party transaction involving cryptocurrency in Florida, even perhaps withdrawing money from a crypto ATM or buying crypto on an exchange, required sellers to have a state money transmission license. For crypto companies, that necessitated meeting financial stability requirements and completing complicated paperwork. They called it the Espinoza problem. In July, the state ordered a dozen ATM providers that sell crypto in exchange for cash, including CashCloud, CoinNow, and DigiCash, to register as money transmitters despite appeals from the companies. Last year, Mr. Alupis introduced the bill to exempt two-party crypto transactions after lobbying appeals by Mr. Arms and trade group and the trade group he leads the florida blockchain business association its members include binance the large crypto exchange the bill failed to win senate approval and it was reintroduced for this year's session rush uh russell weagle something like that weagle weagle the florida commissioner of the office of financial regulation said he endorsed the legislation that mr arms had championed Quote, if I go and buy groceries at your food store, that's a two-party transaction, end quote, Mr. Weagle said. Quote, do I need a license for that? It seems absurd, end quote. Lobbyists for Blockchain.com, a cryptocurrency exchange that moved last year from New York to Miami, and Bit5, which manufactures crypto mining equipment in the Florida area, joined the effort, contacting dozens of state lawmakers. Quote, they are very pro-crypto, end quote, Robert Calazzo, the Bit5 chief executive, said of Florida lawmakers. In the future, the company plans to raise money for crypto-friendly legislators in Florida, said Michael Kesty, Bit5's lobbyist. The legislative affairs director of the Florida Blockchain Association, Jason Holloway, is already running for the state house with donations, some in cryptocurrency for Mr. Arms and others. Quote, I don't want it to seem like we are paying for the influence, end quote, Mr. Kesty said, but we do uh, want to support them. What's happened in Florida is playing out in other states as the crypto industry mobilizes to move its agenda or defend against efforts to rein in it. In New York, for example, concern about the environmental impact of so-called crypto mining in which large amounts of electricity are used to run computers that allow investors to get newly issued crypto tokens has led to pending legislation to ban these centers. Another bill proposes cracking down on common forms of crypto fraud. The result has been a flood of lobbying in New York to combat these measures. The opposite is happening in Georgia and Illinois, where legislators have proposed tax incentives for mining companies. The Illinois bill emerged after Senga Systems, a crypto mining company, converted an old steel mill in the state into a mining center and sought a special tax break to help finance the project. Last year, a Seng Senga, I think, lobbyist took an official uh, from the State Chamber of Commerce to visit the project in Hennepin, Illinois. Keith Stats, the chamber official, suggested modifying a state uh, law to extend tax incentives to mining companies that set up shop in Illinois. He wrote a draft of the bill, which the chamber shared with Senga. Quote, I looked at it, I iterated with them, end quote, said Spencer Marr, Senga's president. They made sure I was good with it. In January, Sue Rezin, a Republican state senator, introduced the bill. At, er, at the urging of the chamber, she said in an interview, she said she was not a crypto expert and hadn't heard too much about mining's environmental impact. The bill's final version, which is waiting action, is nearly identical to the draft written by Mr. Stats, including technical language about data centers and mining. You would hope, you would hope that it would include technical language about data centers and mining if you're writing a bill about that, about data centers and mining. I'm, I'm just saying. 
Not all legislative proposals have come to fruition. In Mississippi, Josh Harkins, a Republican state senator, proposed several crypto bills this year, including one exempting digital tokens from securities laws. He said he had gotten the idea from a lobbyist, Daniel Harrison, who was hoping to start a local blockchain trade association. The bills died in committee in February. Mr. Harkins said he planned to revive them this summer. Uh, I think that uh, surrounding the digital tokens area is specifically a space that needs regulation, primarily because of the ease of use of spinning up tokens on ERC-20 or BEP or whatever it is and creating rug pulls very easily. It's not difficult at all. Tons of people do it. In fact, I was watching a prank video just last night about a guy that basically created a fake token to sell to a to an influencer and trick them into buying or taking a sponsorship from a fake, fake token. Um, I think that these clearly got shot down because there are still some regulatory concerns surrounding them. And it makes sense um, to me, right? I think that all of these, like all of this is being actually kind of done in the proper manner and starting to get figured out, right? In some states where crypto legislation has passed, the architects of the proposals have moved swiftly to profit on the laws. Last year, Kentucky passed a pair of bills creating tax incentives for crypto mining companies. One was sponsored by Brandon Smith, a Republican who leads the state Senate's Natural Resources and Energy Committee. A few months after the bill passed, Mr. Smith teamed up with Bitmain, a supplier of hardware for crypto mining, to propose a Kentucky-based repair center for mining equipment, a project he has since abandoned. Mr. Smith, in, in an interview, said he did not consider his work in the industry a conflict given that he had not applied for tax credits uh, his law created or for the same tax credits. Nowhere has the potential for crypto advocates to profit on new legislation becomes more apparent than in Wyoming. Since 2018, Wyoming has established more than 20 laws that make it easier for crypto industry to operate. A key player was Caitlin Long, a Wall Street veteran and a crypto booster who helped engineer a 2019 law that paved the way for banks handling digital assets to receive Wyoming charters. Not long after the crypto banking legislation passed, Ms. Long opened Avanti Bank and thanked Wyoming's legislature for making the business possible. The bank promptly received a state charter. Last year, the business known as Custodia raised 37 million US dollars from venture investors Quote, somebody has to be in the arena doing the work, end quote, Miss Long said in an interview. Miss Long worked on the banking legislation with Trace Mayer, a crypto investor and entrepreneur. Both had invested in Kraken, a crypto exchange that also received a state charter. Critics have accused Miss Long of using her influence to enrich herself. Quote, they came in and started writing legislation that really gamed it to their advantage, end quote, said Robert Jennings, who served with Miss Long on a coalition of crypto supporters in Wyoming. Quote, it quit being about how do we help Wyoming people and quickly became how do we game this system for the big crypto players, end quote. Miss Long said she hadn't decided to start a crypto bank until months after Wyoming's legislation passed when it was unclear whether others would take advantage of the law. Quote, it's not easy to find the right people, end quote, she said. The crypto kids in hoodies, so to speak, were not likely to pass muster. Oh, make an attack. What are you talking? Am I a crypto kid in a hoodie? Is that, is that what I am, Miss Long, to you? Is that what I am to you? Come on. No, we just don't have old money. That's the thing. We just don't have old boomer money. You guys are stripping it from us. <laughs> stripping it from us. That's what you're doing. What are you going to live until you guys are like 100 years old? Staying in the, in the work industry until your late 80s? Not letting millennials get jobs and move up. All right, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done complaining. Let's talk about mining profitability. I'm done complaining like a millennial. 
I hope you enjoyed this clip from the Crypto Mining Morning Show every Monday through Friday, 7.45 a.m. Pacific and 10.45 a.m. Eastern Time. You can check out more clips here, or if you're interested in checking out the entire live show, you can check that out down here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next Tuesday.